So welcome everyone to this August session of the OUNI Community Hours. I hope you are all having a lovely summer. This is the agenda we have for today. First, I'm going to present what are going to be the new things for OUNI 2022-09. Then Raul and myself will present the outcome of the past hack week where we were working on adding new distributions as clients for OUNI. After that, Michael will talk about GPG key handling in UNI, something that was already released as part of the last UNI release. And as always, we will have a few minutes for questions and answers. But as always, of course, if you want to ask something, you don't really need to wait until the end. That is more about generic questions or ideas, something you want to discuss, but anything we are presenting about the topics, feel free to interrupt us and we will try to yeah, clarify all the questions. Very well, then what is going to be new with UNI 2020-09? We have so far three things. First is the pip support for the salt bundle. Uh, this now allows users to extend the functionality of the bundle salt minion with any extra Python packages that you want to add there. This works with states, works as a module. Just keep in mind that uh, as of today, even upstream, there are some things you will need to do as a module, but you cannot do from a state. There will be links at the release notes for Uni, so you can check how all this is working. And keep in mind, of course, that is, this is for the salt bundle, which, by the way, is now the default for all the new operating systems, the default for all the new clients you are going to bootstrap for uh, yeah, any operating system. Um, <coughs> I'm sorry. If you, are uh, if you are still using the salt classic package for minions that were onboarded before UNI 2022-06, it is highly recommended that you migrate to the salt bundle because we are going to focus our efforts there. And again, the new operating systems will only get the, the bundle. We are also updating the Apache exporter to the version 0.11.0 for both SUSE Linux Enterprise and OpenSUSE. Those are the two operating systems where we support it for now. With that comes TLS support. Of course, there are some new metrics. And uh, again, you will have a link, a link at the release notes for UNI 2022-09. So you can check what are all the news for this new version. And then something that I know the community is requesting is uh, the support for the Red Hat, Oracle, Alma Linux, Rocky Linux 9 as clients. I can tell you that the code for the basic support is already merged, but we have still two things that are important and are pending. One is the documentation, except for Rocky Linux, because the community already added it. And uh, the salt bundle, I'm not sure if Victor is here, but uh, no, he's not uh, connected today, but he will be working on this in the next weeks. So we expect that everything will be ready to be released as part of 2022-09. But of course, if you... I think I, I hear someone talking, but the volume is so low that I cannot really follow the question. Was there a question? Oh, no, sorry, I was accidentally off mute. Oh, okay, no problem. Okay, so uh, yeah, I was mentioning that we expect to have this ready for UNI 2022-09, but of course, uh, if you want to help, then we would very much appreciate help with the documentation. You can basically, if you want to collaborate, you can use the documentation we already have for uh, Red Hat, Oracle, Linux, and Alma, Linux 8, because for 9, it's going to be basically the same. I think there are some changes to the, to the channel names, but pretty much everything else should be similar. 
And uh, yeah, those are the news for the next version. Uh, as always, yeah, I guess someone will ask when we are going to release it. Uh, and uh, I think that the most likely during the last week of September, so between September 26th and September 30th. Um, with that, we have some time for questions about the release. Uh, let me check the chat. Uh, okay, it's, yeah, Donald was adding a, a link to, to the salt bundle. Well, to, not to the salt bundle, but to an <clears throat> article, I guess, on the blog about the salt bundle, right? Yep, yeah, exactly. the there was a blog released about it today, um, which I, I think should help if you're not used to it. I yeah, know the, con the context there is SUSE manager, but it's relevant for the Uyuni folk also. Yeah, exactly. In any case, let me briefly repeat that the salt bundle is something new what, that we are doing for all the operating systems where we are bundling salt plus Python plus all the dependencies that are required to run it. So we can run it independently, independently of the software that is installed on the on the target operating system and as a benefit that will also allow that also allow us to coexist with other salt masters so now the bundle can connect to the salt master on the uni server and on parallel if you want you can still have the classic package provided even by your distribution if you uh, if you want to use it connecting to an external salt master not sure if you if we have any questions otherwise we can jump into the next presentation okay very well then let me switch these slides just one moment please and uh, okay i hope you can see the first slide about the hack week yes very well. So this is the the project the, the project that Raul and myself had for the last hack week. Uh, we are on, we are mentioning Victor as well because Victor was helping us a lot getting the bundle ready. Well, proof of proof of concepts for the bundle ready to be able to onboard OpenOla and uh, and um, Ubuntu 2022.04 and in, and in the end. I ended up adding even the basic support for our Oracle Linux and uh, Alma Linux and Red Hat Linux 9. And with that, I think that Raul, you can take control of the presentation and go ahead. Yes, hello. Uh, uh, my name is Raul Osuna. Uh, this is the first time that I'm joining the community meeting, so probably uh, I should introduce myself. I'm a support engineer at SUSE, uh, so not the usual profile of this meeting uh, uh, of developers. Uh, and I was taking part of the Hack Week for uh, the first time uh, because in support uh, we have uh, a lot of business with with customers and we don't have so much time. So I was happy to contribute for the first time. Um, uh, my contribution was uh, adding support for Open Euler 2203 LTS in Uyuni. Uh, what is working is uh, the repo sync uh, was working at the hack week time is with the exception of the update channels and uh, there was an issue open uh, but this was already fixed so all the channels should sync uh, by now uh, the onboarding with salt and salt uh, ssh uh, with the salt bundle that we just introduced was working uh, installing and um, uninstalling upgrading packages uh, everything was working and applying salt states or running uh, remote commands that was working as well. Uh, we had some problems with formulas. Uh, we reported an issue, uh, but as for the basic uh, usage uh, for the basic support, everything was working. Uh, we didn't test the Prometheus Spartan or the OpenSCAP guides. Uh, and the documentation was already emerged, I think, by now. 
the client tools are the very same that the client tools for an enterprise Linux uh, 8. Um, and the availability uh, to Uni is uh, to be defined right now. Uh, because of the second point of this slide uh, of stream salt suggested a different approach uh, for implementing uh, this distribution and we might need to rewrite uh, a lot of things and not being a developer it might take me some time if I finally do this and also to introduce uh, the challenges for someone not being a developer so that you can see that uh, even if you're not a very experienced developer you can contribute to the to the community uh, yes the environment was a bit difficult um, but in the end uh, yeah it was something rewarding and and that changes your your usual work And with that, uh, I think the part of the open OLR uh, is done. If you have any questions about this distribution, feel free to ask. So this distribution is based in China primarily, right? And it's a cooperative thing with between Huawei. I, I think Huawei was kind of the major sponsor of it. Is that right? As far as I remember, yes, it is. Uh, Julio, you had some additional comment, I think. No, no, you're right. This was uh, mainly sponsored by Huawei. One something interesting, but just just to mention it is that to build it, they are using Open Build Service, their 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 own Open Build Service instance. In fact. Um, I would say we could not really identify what this distribution was based on, but I, we thought it was mostly CentOS 8 because it has DNF available, but however, it doesn't have any modules or... Yeah, I was going to say they, they took out app streams, right? Yeah, 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 that's right. So they simplified things a lot. They have, they even have a repository called ePol, which as far as I could understand is some something like ePel, but for their distribution. And yeah, well, the good thing is that making this thing to work is what, as, as Raul told, is uh, it was challenging, but not that complicated as we expected. Initially, the big challenge, of course, is uh, the support for salt. For that, Victor had to prepare one of the POCs. So the salt bundle is not ready uh, at this moment working for open oil if you try to use the the, the bundle for um, enterprise linux 8 that's something that could be fixed later but as raul told already there were some some discussions upstream about what the operating system family for this operating system should be and it seems that finally they will change what was in there in the beginning because until now this operating system has its own family, but they decided that they decided that it would be better to have Red Hat as family. And of course, that will mean changes on the bundle, changes on the SLS states, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. That is why at this moment we cannot still warranty when we will have this available at Uyuni. But again, any help from the community is of course <laughs> very welcome. And I'm sure that Raul will be happy to work with any of you if you decide to help. Well, I know some concerned people in China that have reached out to me in the past about Open Euler, so maybe I can pass those names on. Mm -hmm. you, you mean people from SUSE that were interested in having this as supported for, for SUSE money as well? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, of course, that would be great because that could also mean that maybe we can give it some kind of uh, internal priority, but that's something we will see later, I guess. Okay, any other questions about Open? Yeah, Open Oil, Open Euler. I'm not sure even about the naming, to, the naming to be, to be honest. If not, then I can briefly talk about Ubuntu 22.04. 
Very well, so I will quickly go through this because, well, this was already released as part of the last uni release. This was a pull request from the community that I just need to adapt uh, a little bit. So yeah, more and more, I'm very happy to see that the community is stepping in and helping with a lot of stuff. Um, since this is a new operating system, well, it's a new version of an existing operating system, but anyway, it will only get the salt bundle, so there won't be a classic package and there won't be support for traditional stack. And by the way, remember that the traditional stack is now formally unsupported, so it can still work, but you should not use it anymore and you should migrate all of your clients to salt. Um, the SCAP security guides, they, they are available already, but when well when when we released it uh, when we released this it didn't include the version 2204 yet so i guess that we should get that soon and at this moment we don't have prometheus exporters we still need to decide what we will be adding that as officially supported but still remember that you have a lot of exporters at the universe repository that you can still use and they should work just fine with the monitoring solution for Uni. As I told, this was released already with Uni 2022-08. We have some hiccups, as maybe some of you know already, with the Repro package. Um, if you are still having problems with that, there is an open issue. This will be fixed with the next release, and for now, there is a workaround. You just need to force installation of the right version of the package. And uh, uh, sorry, let me uh, switch the to the next one, which is, uh, yeah, of course, Alma Linux 9. This is still not released. Again, the only uh, way of connecting that is supported is, supported is the salt bundle. Well, you can still use salt SSH, but this is going to use the bundle as well. Um, yeah. So we still see here the uh, Ubuntu slide. I'm not sure. Is... <laughs> Did somebody else see something else? Well, I'm not sure. It's not advancing here. Yeah. OK, maybe I need to. Oh, someone took can... control of the. OK, one no. moment. So now you should be able to see Alma Linux 9, I hope. Yes. Yep. Yes. OK, very well. Did you see this? Other slide about the things for Ubuntu 2004, or you only saw the. No, no you not in the past. So you didn't take control. The um, yeah, too, but uh, sorry, sorry about that because the problem is that I can still uh, still switch the slides, even <laughs> if I didn't take control. Yeah, sorry about that. So I was taking over the logo then. Well, then anyway, uh, let's go back to Alma Linux 9. So. As I was saying, only salt bundle. You can use uh, this as a regular salt minion or salt SSH, but it's, it's going to use the salt bundle, no classic package, and no traditional stack. This is still work in progress. Reposync and content lifecycle management are both working. Victor, once again, prepared a proof of concept for the bundle for Alma Linux 9 that he will need to integrate with the main package of the bundle. And with that, the basic smoke tests were just passing. So I could install, remove packages, um, run salt commands, formulas, um, apply salt states, and everything else. The availability at uni, we expect that this will be part of 2022-09, as I already explained at the previous presentation. About the other clones, we already have the code merge for Red Hat and Oracle. Once again, Rocky Linux in this case was added by the community. So thanks again. We aim to have this ready for 09, but as I told at the other presentation, it depends on the documentation and the salt bundle. So it could be delayed. We hope that will not be the case, but uh, yeah, we will see. And with that, it means that we have more and more operating systems added. So as you can see, well, in this case, those are the SUSE Manager uh, releases. But in the end, aligned with SUSE Manager 4.3, we have for now SUSE uh, Uni 
2006 and 2022-09. And with that, in the end, we are, we are adding or we were adding support for Debian 11, Ubuntu 22.04, Alma Linux 9, Rocky Linux 9, Oracle Linux 9, and Red Hat Enterprise Linux 9. And as always, if you want to add even more operating systems, then remember that you can always contribute with a pull request. If you have questions about how to do it, you can ping us, you can use the other pull requests we already merged with examples, et cetera, et cetera. If you want to add, uh, let's call them compatible operating system with something, something we have, it should be more or less easy. If you want to add something different, uh, such as Arch Linux, or the, yeah, I don't know, maybe open WBRT or something like that, then that will require more changes than usual to the repository syncing tools. And of course, to add things to OBS so we can build all the packages. But yeah, as I say, the sky is the limit. So think about what you want. Think if you can implement the changes or at least you can suggest what, what you would like to see next. And uh, yeah, well, questions about the presentation for me or for Raul? Nice job, guys. Um, um, my only question about distributions is, is anybody interested in or working on Amazon Linux 2022? Hey, to be honest, I was not aware that there was a new version after Amazon Linux too. I mean, I, I knew they were working on it based on Fedora, if I recall correctly, but is that already yeah. released? Uh, no, but it's coming and there's uh, preliminary um, versions, I think, right now, but it's it's coming very soon. Like you said, it's based on Fedora, but they're creating their own lifecycle cadence for it. They're planning on releasing a new version every two years with a five-year life cycle. So they're basically snapshotting the, the base is underneath this Fedora, but as is true with Amazon Linux too, there's a significant number of packages that Amazon adds. Mm -hmm. Well, the good thing is that now with the bundle, we don't care about the Python version of the dependencies on, on Amazon Linux. And since it's RPM and in the end, the, it's using Jump repositories, it should not be that hard to add support. Yeah, I just wondered if anybody was messing with it yet. Mm. It is the default when you go out to Amazon and you build a new instance, you're you're going to get Amazon Linux as the default. So I'm going to imagine as soon as it's released that, that those bits are going to flip from Amazon Linux 2 to 2022, but it's, it's coming. It essentially does create, though, a whole nother um, support cycle, you know, as as I pointed out, you're they're going to have their own life cycle for it. So we have to think through how you know how long it takes for us to adapt to that but you're right i think with the salt bundle it gives us so much better flexibility to be able to not have to stress over uh, provided python libraries and as long as we choose what family it is and and stick it in the right bucket i think we'll be fine we're already parsing the metadata for securities and patches in Amazon Linux 2, I wouldn't imagine that they would change that part significantly. Yeah, hopefully not, or at least the format maybe will be compatible with uh, Red Hat itself or something like that. I can tell you, for example, that for, I didn't mention before, but for uh, Alma Linux, which is what I tested, and if I recall correctly, Oracle Linux as well. I didn't test Linux myself, but I think it's the same the security information is working just fine. So you get all the uh, rat information synced. Okay, well, again, if someone from the community wants to start the work before we can even have a look, 
then go ahead. This should be something more or less easy. And for now, I think that even the bundle for EL8 or otherwise soon EL9 should be working with this new Amazon Linux. Because I guess they are based on, I didn't check, do you know on what Fedora version they based this new, this new Amazon Linux? Maybe it's F36 or something like that, or 37? Well, in, in any case, it should be something close to, to Red Hat 9, I guess. Yeah, here's the FAQs. I'm going to post them in the chat there. Yeah, I mentioned Fedora, but not the version they are based on. Anyway, yeah, someone from the community wants to try. <laughs> Uh, try with the EL8 or soon EL9 bundle, and you should be able to onboard if you do the basic changes to the to the salt states. Okay, so if we don't have more questions, then I think it's time for Michael to talk about the GBG key management improvements for the well, yeah, last two universes because this was already included. Okay, so let me share my presentation. <coughs> so, um, yeah, so this feature uh, was requested uh, uh, also here from the community. Uh, so a longer time ago, especially as here are more, um, yeah, the case happening that um, external repositories, maybe other build service repositories are included. Uh, and they are all signed with different GPG keys. And uh, so the question is then always how to get that to the uh, to the client side. So, and um, uh, this is what um, we did now. So uh, first you can now specify the GPG keys for a channel. And uh, so you all maybe know this field already. It's there since the beginning, uh, even so it was there in Spacewalk already. So use G, uh, so the GPG key URL in every channel. So you can specify a URL there. And um, in the past, uh, it was only used for the traditional stack and only under some very, very specific conditions that this URL made an effect. In most cases, it was just uh, an informative uh, uh, thing. Uh, now, um, we use this value and set this in the repository uh, file on the client. So uh, yum uh, repositories uh, can specify a GPG key uh, for every repository. And this is uh, what happens with this URL. Um, and therefore, um, it has only a real effect on RPM-based distributions. That means Red Hat and SUSE. Um, and uh, not so much on uh, Debian. Uh, because in Debian packages are not signed directly, they are signing only the metadata. And this was already working in the past. Uh, if you specify, um, so follow our documentation about how to um, use your own GPG key to um, sign the metadata, uh, that GPG key was always um, um, synchronized with the clients and uh, the setup was was correct and so the, for that one uh, nothing has changed uh, with this uh, feature so uh, http and https urls uh, in the channel uh, gpg key url is working so um it's only a little bit a question about the security of this um because um, so you point to um, a file outside and uh, so somebody could uh, hack that and, and put you whatever they want in, into that file. Um, so it's a little bit safer if you uh, point this to the Uyuni server. So I saw this in a GitHub issue in Uyuni that somebody tried it out already. So this is uh, working fine. Um, 
maybe even better would be to use file URLs pointing to the GPG key, which is installed locally on the client. And uh, we have also a deployment mechanism, de mechanism for the keys so that you can deploy these GPG keys um, to the clients via salt. Um, so I will show later how that works. And what we also did, we adapted um, through the space of common channels and also uh, for, for through the manager, the MGR Sync, uh, to uh, set the GPG key URL uh, for the repositories uh, and channels we define uh, using this. So here, um, a small screenshot that you uh, remember here. So, so at the end of the channels, here you have the GPG key URL uh, where you can uh, enter a, a file URL, HTTP, HTTPS URL. Um, so uh, again, GPG key ID and the fingerprint is just for uh, your information. It, it has uh, so no really effect on, on the client side. Okay, so uh, deploying keys. Uh, so so uh, there are some keys we are deploying automatically. Uh, so and um, some are already installed. So for example, the official OS keys from Red Hat and their clones, they are always installed already by the OS. So if you do a minimal installation or if you get a cloud image or a Docker image or whatever, uh, so the keys are already installed and available, uh, always under the same name. And for this, we do not deploy anything. We are just pointing file URLs to them. Um, and updating the keys in case somebody uh, wants to, uh, if, if uh, Red Hat or uh, one of the uh, other vendors uh, wants to uh, enhance the lifetime or whatever, then it would be um, uh, their duty to update them in the RPM package. So the, um, and the following keys are deployed automatically. Um, so we are deploying the client tools keys, uh, the expanded support key, uh, the Uyuni key, and uh, you can specify your own keys uh, if you want. Um, uh, so uh, also this is what I show later and the, of course, the own metadata signing key. So uh, when you follow the documentation, this is of course also deployed. Uh, with deployment, we just mean that we uh, copy the file um, to the client uh, and make it available under a very uh, under specified location. So it does not mean that it gets automatically trusted. This is um, uh, a different mechanism uh, I show later. Custom GPG key. So if you have now your own build service project with uh, uh, with uh, own um, GPG key and you want to provide this file, then you can do it the following way. So you define pillar data uh, in salt uh, so uh, under the key custom underscore uh, GPG keys, and then you just make a list uh, with the file names, only the file names, not a pass, only the file name. Uh, and then you provide the key as file in the salt file system under uh, in the directory GPG. So you um, create a directory GPG, for example, in SRV slash salt, uh, that created a directory GPG, and then you put uh, the uh, file into that one uh, with the exact name what you specify in custom GPG keys. So, and um, then SALT will deploy this automatically into the directory on the client etc pki rpm gpg slash and use exactly the same key name. So, and with this, you know where it will end up and you can now set a file URL in the channel uh, which points exactly to that. So file colon slash 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 etc slash pki slash rpm dash gpg slash and the key name. Okay, so about trusting. Uh, so as I already said, deploying the key to the client does not automatically make them trust. So you can deploy any kind of keys there into the directory, but only the keys which are really used um, will be trusted. So, and that means uh, only when you 
uh, add the channels uh, to the client uh, to your client, and in this channel there is now the uh, the GPG keywell, uh, and we do a uh, refresh on the repository, or in Red Hat case mostly this happens on uh, package installation. Then uh, it will look if the key is not already in the key ring, then it will look up this key URL and then uh, import it when it's match. So and uh, this happens now automated. Uh, and the task, what you need to do is just to assign the channel to the client. So um, this is how the trusting works. Um, so we have questions here so far. No, not not really. I did uh, again the mistake of confusing deploying and trusting. So I was just commenting that yeah, exactly. Some Red Hat clones are not trusting the keys by default. But please go on and everyone reading the chat, just ignore the last messages. Okay, so um, yeah, this is important because as I said, so for example, we are deploying the, the expanded support key. So no, um, and if you, uh, to every Red Hat system. So, and that means that if you don't have that, which maybe the most of you uh, don't have, uh, don't be scared that you have the key there. So as long as you don't have a channel assigned to that system, which defines that this key should be used, uh, it will not be imported. Okay, so far for the GPG keys, I have another small thing uh, which might be important for you. Um, it's about disabling local repositories. Uh, <clears throat> you know that we did that in the past only for the bootstrapping and it happened after the bootstrapping. Uh, and this has now changed. So uh, what we are now doing is we are disabling all local defined repositories before we start really the bootstrapping. And in addition to that one, we also uh, disable again all local repositories on every high state or better on, yeah, I think it's on every high state. Um, so uh, that means that um, all the repositories should really come from a uni server. Um, if you don't want that, <laughs> if you want to play around a little bit with the system or whatever, you can set a pillar data for um, uh, changing this. So uh, you just set the pillar for this system and say MGI disable local repos to false. Uh, and then uh, this will not be done during the high state, but it still will be done for bootstrapping. But then only one time for the bootstrap time uh, and, and never again after that point in time. So not that you are um, wondering if you uh, add local repositories to your system, install something out of it, out of it then you are uh, in, uh, calling a high state and wonder that the repository is disabled. So uh, this is exactly now the new feature. Yeah, and I would say that this is also very important. And one of the reasons we did it is because of the disconnected setups. Those setups were your clients have access to the uni server the uni server has access to the internet but the clients in some in some deployments they don't have access to the internet in such situations if you have a package the uh, sorry a repository that is not provided by the uni server and you try to bootstrap or if you try to apply a high state or install a package, et cetera, et cetera, well, then that's going to, it depends on the building system, but somehow it's going to call a refresh of the metadata from the repositories. And of course, if those clients don't have access to the internet, then that refresh will fail. And I don't have the list in my mind, maybe you still remember, Michael, but in some cases that is considered an error, which fails the state. In some other cases, depends on the package manager, is not considered an error. Yeah, right. So um, typically it fails the bootstrapping. So we had also the case that uh, sometimes some cloud images specify repositories which are only ex uh, available from inside of the specific cloud. And uh, if you run it in a different cloud, or if you run it uh, in uh, on on your uh, local machine in uh, as virtual machine, um, uh, then it fails because uh, yeah, this that repository is not accessible. So and uh, yeah, and that's the re main reason why we now really disable everything what is predefined before starting the bootstrapping. 
Okay, and um, yeah, this is, I just wanted to finish here the presentation. Uh, and now what I can do is maybe to show you a little bit of the GPG keys. So here, um, I think you can now see my screen. Uh, I have here an Incentor 7, uh, and I have here for now assigned this base channel. And here in the space channel, there is um, um, the GPG key well defined. And uh, now let's have a look how this looks like on the system. Um, if you look here, no, under this path, So then we find here really the GPG key. What you can see now here in addition is also all the other keys uh, which, which were deployed. Um, so these are the three keys which comes with the OS. And in addition, we have the UUNI tools, we have the RED as the expanded support. We have the client tools keys for uh, enterprise Linux um, 7, 8, 9, uh, as far as we know. And the uh, also the old one, which is not really supported anymore, so for EL6 and, and lower. Uh, and here we have a special one, my key. And uh, this is, uh, I wanted to show you how I specified that one here. So uh, when you go here on the master um, in SF4 pillar, I created here a top SLS file. So, and uh, specified here the uh, server where I want to deploy that and say, okay, I uh, look here into the GPG keys file. This file is here directly next to it. And now I specified here exactly what I um, showed you uh, before also in this presentation, custom GPG keys, and I called that key my key dot key. So in addition to the pillar data, I need to define that key in the directory GPG. And here I have the file my key. So this is a GPG key. Uh, and this was now transferred here and is now available here on the client. Um, as a GPG key. And when you look now into the uh, state apply, let me see, systems, centers, this is now here during bootstrapping. So the SSL certificate. So, and now here we have all the deployments of the keys. So first the ones uh, which are standard, so the UNI tools, the uh, expanded support key, EL tools, uh, EL6 tools. And here we have now uh, my key. And as you can see here now, we have here the disabling. The second, what I just told about that we are disabling here all, all the other repositories. And um, This channel repo was now updated, but at this point it was not uh, really, uh, it, uh, I did not use an, uh, an activation key. <coughs> so I subscribed here these channels now. Uh, and with this one also refresh was called. So yeah, this is how this feature in the end looks like and how you get the GPG keys deployed on the client so that you can install the RPM packages. Okay. Very nice. Thank you, Michael. Yep, and I have a question since now this is deploying the client tools key, right? Yep. Uh, I'm not sure. I didn't check the, uh, this on the last documentation, but did we remove that mention about trusting the GPG key for the clients on the client configuration guide? Because now it's not needed anymore, right? Um, 
if you configure it correctly, then not. Um, we need to check again the documentation. So uh, it, it was before verification, so <laughs> uh, already a long time ago. Uh, we adapted uh, the documentation for this GPG keys, uh, but I'm not sure if it's good enough. So um, yeah, for the also for the community, feel free to to read up the uh, the part in 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 the our documentation. Uh, if you feel that this is not sufficient, feel free to open a pull request against the documentation uh, and uh, let us improve it so that it's uh, really understandable for everybody. Okay, any other questions about this topic? Uh, just on the repos, uh, disabling them before the bootstrap, is that because now uh, we don't need um, base operating system dependencies if we're installing salt bundle? Um, so this should be more or less the case already before that we don't need the dependencies. So, uh, but it um, in the past, it was more about that that we okay in just just in case we forgot something, then then maybe they they can be provided by the OS um, by the existing OS repositories. But uh, as we said, it creates more problems than it helps, uh, especially when the repositories do not exist uh, or are not reachable or accessible. And uh, we had these cases more in the past than we had missing packages. So, uh, and with this, we now uh, get, of course, um, find out easier what packages are missing. Um, so, of course, we have always a problem that there are, every OS provides multiple minimal installations. So, because a minimal installation when you come from an ISO image is different than you get when you get a cloud image. Uh, and even cloud images uh, are sometimes uh, different from each other. KVM image might be different from the, the AWS provider or Google Cloud or Azure or whatever cloud. So, and this becomes a little bit tricky. So, maybe the one or the other needs to be added. But yeah, also with a bundle, we are hopefully in a better situation because most stuff should be bundled so it and the depend the only these uh, few dependencies which the bundle st uh, still has is something which should really be available uh, i'm not sure what uh, what currently the dependencies are but i think we are still pro uh, requiring a glibc uh, and uh, openssl i think because we don't want to mess around with um, or break fips certifications and things like that um but uh, having a minimal image without OpenSSL these days is, I think, also not really useful. So I think they are, should should hopefully be all there. Yeah, that's right. And uh, now it was the right time to do this because, uh, again, the bundle is the default for all the new clients you want to bootstrap and add to the uni server unless and we don't recommend that you modify the configuration to still use the the classic package for the operating systems that they still have it but for the new bootstrap repositories if you check them um, for example the uh, pull request that we already merged to add uh, rocky linux uh, 9 uh, red hat uh, 9 etc etc the only package we have at the bootstrap repository now is the bundle nothing else and with that i was able to bootstrap very very minimal installations from this uh, image and i don't recall if i tried also the kvm image but as my as michael said all the things that we are requiring should really really be on a on the most basic installation so of course maybe you will miss them at the docker container who knows <laughs> but at least on real operating systems they should be there Okay, so if there are no more questions, then I give back to Julio. Thank you very much. Exactly, thank you very much for the presentation and all the work on this, Michael. So now we still have some minutes for the general questions and answers, or as always, ideas, something you want to comment, something you want us to clarify, whatever comes to your mind. We have almost eight minutes for that, so go ahead. Hi there. 
Um, I was just working on an um, Uyuni Ansible collection before I went to vacation like others in this call. So the problem that I had is that I had a lot of customers that use SUSE Manager for a long time and they are happy with it, but they have chosen Ansible Tower or Ansible as their single source of automation, you can say. And they were looking for a way to automate tasks in um, so the manager using Ansible. So, for example, they wanted to stage patches to particular systems or things like that. And therefore, I started working on the Ansible collection. And I was just wondering um, whether this might be interesting for some other folks, maybe. So it's available on GitHub. I could demonstrate it next um, community hours if you would like to see this. Um, and I'm also looking for ideas. So just pasted the link in the chat. Feel free to let me know what you think about it. Well, I think that for sure it would be really nice to see this presented on the next community hours. So if you want to do it, I can just add you right away after this meeting. That would be great. <laughs> I'd love to do this. Awesome. And uh, yeah, I should have a further look at this, but so far looks like something really interesting. Yeah, so let's do that. I will add you to the to the um, uh, community hours for next time. And if you want, maybe I can send also an email to the devil mailing list and users mailing list so people can have a look and give their opinion about it. Yeah, that looks great. I think I, I already did this a couple of weeks ago. Oh, but, uh, sorry. So no, maybe, maybe yeah, yeah, maybe I did miss that that email. Too many emails. Okay, then that's great. I will just add you to the next session, and you can present this in real life. Right. Great. Thanks a lot. I have a question. I'm just curious, how many community peoples are playing with the container-based proxy? Because we made some significant changes in uni 2022 08 and and we started providing preliminary uh testing for deploying it with a helm chart and i know that i'm fooling around with it but i just wondered if there are other people that are using it And crickets. <laughs> yeah, well, but keep in mind that in the end we are 16 people in this meeting, so maybe you can send an email to to the user list and okay. uh, request feedback there. Yeah, so um, we made some big changes that kind of are the same things that we're wanting to do later in SUSE Manager in where the configuration is and and it broke all of my previously deployed container based proxies so i had to I had to recover but i'm you know i i come to expect that i mean we're we're not trying to provide smooth upgrade paths always but uh, but i was just curious if anybody else had messed with it I'm interested about that, so I have a question from myself. I remember I added something to the release notes about the configuration being completely new. Not sure. I don't have the release notes in my mind. Not sure if the instructions we provide were enough or if you think we should improve them a little bit. Yeah, so um, so what I found was if, if I had deployed a container-based proxy with 2022-06, um, no amount of mangling changes, reinstallation, uninstallation, or anything ever could make it work again uh, once I tried upgrading. So I regenerated the configuration files from the user interface 
and attempted to and and updated the RPM because there's a single RPM that has manages the Podman system D services and uh, tried to re and, you know and 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 I even did Podman RMI and removed all the existing container images. Of course, the services was stopped and, and then started it and. I never could get it to um, salt broker was was not able to broker connections between the clients and the server ever again. Uh, I ended up building a new proxy container based proxy um, on a different server um, and manually migrating all my clients, of course, now because they're behind a proxy that no longer talks to Uyuni. So I had to manually mess with them, uh, either editing the conf file, susimander.conf file, and point it at the the original server, and then then migrate them, or use reactivation key and and reactivate the boxes. But uh, it was it was messy. It was very messy. I mean, I I know this is a uni, right? I'm not. A, I'm not complaining like it has to be supported. I'm, I was just curious if anybody else had, had hmm. tried that because it was uh, it was it was very messy. It was ugly. Yeah, I'm I'm really, really reading the instructions. It says that yeah, we have a new format from the configuration now. Package as tarball, and all the previous deployed containers and red reference servers will need to get their configuration regenerated and deployed again before pulling these images. Yeah. Reading it a second time, maybe it was not as precise as, as this. Yeah. <laughs> at least what I would expect from uh, the containers world is that you should keep the old proxies still running and you would deploy new containers with a new configuration, migrate the clients to the new containers, uh, the new proxy in the end. And then when that's done, you get rid of the old stuff. But yeah, that's something we need to revisit, I think. Yeah, and I'm just curious in future, I know we're done with um the configuration formats now is how we want it to be and part of it is because um it's using tar gz instead of zip to compress the proxy configuration um and part of that is because micro os for either slee micro or leap micro does not have a zip utility to decompress those um, so it's, and the, the, the number of files and the content of the files changed. That won't be the case in future. I'm just concerned that in future, when we refresh the, the actual containers themselves in the registry upstream, that we have a smooth way for the clients to get the new versions of those containers um, because it was not happening with, with this release. So I, I hope that in future we make it simpler for, for, uh, for everyone using Uyuni to be able to get the latest version of the containers. And, and of course there's compatibility you know, with configuration file, I think we we solved that one. But just getting the latest version, not simple. Yeah, I would say if I may ask, create a, a, a an issue for Uni. I would not call it a bug exactly because this is still on tech preview. But you know, we are still learning how to do this. And yeah, if you provide the feedback, then that would be great for the for the developers to have a look and the community itself to provide their ideas. Yeah, and I'm poking directly at developers too, so I I have a, an in, <laughs> but thank you. Okay, then it's already five, almost o'clock, Central European Standard Time. We could still have time for one more question, but if that is not the case, I don't see anyone talking or raising his or her hand. 
then yeah i wish you a very happy weekend ahead and i will see you once again in one month as always remember we are always available at guitar the mailing lists or github itself remember that you can ping us or even better you can contribute with anything and as i always say you don't really need to be a developer to help with the uni you can still help with the documentation with the website or even with some small changes in the code uh, raul just showed us that that is still possible if you want to fix even some problems with the bootstrap repository definitions or spacewalk common channels those kind of things so yeah again thanks everyone for attending and see you very soon bye bye thanks nice. thanks everybody thank you all bye thank you yep thank bye -bye. you julio enjoy your vacation thanks <laughs> take care bye 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 thank you bye, bye.